Have you ever taken a bite of cake expecting chocolate, but it was vanilla? That disappointment? That's a bad intro. Just like that unexpected bite, a bad intro can leave your readers feeling let down and uninterested. They might have been expecting something rich and engaging, but instead, they got something bland and forgettable. Your intro is your reader's first impression. It sets the stage. It's the first taste of what's to come, and it needs to be compelling enough to make them want to continue. Think of it as the opening act of a grand performance. If the opening act is dull, the audience might leave before the main event, makes them decide, do I want to read more? A strong intro grabs their attention and makes them curious. It's like a teaser that promises more excitement, more information, or more entertainment. It's the hook that reels them in. Think of your favorite books or articles. What hooked you? Was it the intriguing first sentence? The way the author painted a vivid picture right from the start? Or perhaps it was a question that made you think, I need to know the answer to this. Was it a funny anecdote? A shocking statistic? Maybe it was a bold statement that challenged your beliefs or a relatable story that made you feel understood. These elements are powerful because they connect with the reader on an emotional level. You see, a good intro makes you crave more. It's like that first bite of a delicious cake that makes you want to devour the whole slice. It sets the tone and builds anticipation for what's to come. Now ask yourself, is my intro a delicious slice of chocolate cake or a bland piece of vanilla? Is it something that will make your readers mouths water for more or will it leave them feeling indifferent and ready to move on to something else? Share your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear what makes an intro irresistible for you. Is it the promise of a great story, the allure of new knowledge, or the thrill of a good laugh? And don't forget to take our quick survey about intro preferences. Your feedback helps us understand what hooks readers and keeps them coming back for more. So, what's your take on the perfect intro? Let us know. So you want to write an intro that's more exciting than a dancing puppy video? I hear ya. The key is to pique their curiosity. Start with a question they can't resist, like, ever wonder why cats are obsessed with boxes? Or drop a mind-blowing fact. Your brain generates enough electricity to power a light bulb. See? Instantly hooked. Remember, your intro is a teaser trailer for the rest of your writing. Make it pop. What's the most captivating intro you've ever read? Tell me in the comments, and don't forget to take our fun survey. You've got them hooked with your killer intro. Now reel them in. This is where you clearly state your topic. Don't be vague, don't make them guess. Tell them exactly what they're in for, but keep it snappy. For example, after your cat and boxes question, you could say, we're diving into the quirky world of feline behavior. See, intriguing and to the point. What are some creative ways you can transition from your hook to your topic? Share your ideas in the comments and don't forget our survey. Ever notice how some articles feel like a jumbled puzzle? That's what happens when your sections don't flow smoothly. Each section should build upon the last, like a good dance routine. But how do you create this magical flow? Transitions. These little words and phrases are like bridges connecting your ideas. Use words like, however, furthermore, or on the other hand. Remember, smooth transitions make your writing easy and enjoyable to read. And who doesn't love that? What are your go-to transition words? Share them in the comments and take our survey for a chance to win a prize. Section five, help, my sections are a jumbled mess. Does your writing feel like a chaotic whirlwind of ideas with no clear direction or structure? You're not alone. Many writers struggle with organizing their thoughts into coherent sections, feeling lost in a sea of paragraphs. It's easy to get overwhelmed when your sections are all over the place, but don't worry, there's a way out of this mess. Don't worry, I've got you. With a few simple strategies, you can transform your jumbled sections into a well-organized masterpiece. The key to organizing your sections is simple, one idea per section. This means each section should focus on a single main point, making it easier for your readers to follow along. Think of each section as a mini essay with its own focus. Start with a clear topic sentence that introduces the main idea of the section. This sets the stage for what's to come. Start with your main point, then provide supporting evidence or examples. Use bullet points or numbered lists to break down complex information into digestible chunks. Keep it clear, concise, and always relate back to your main topic. Avoid unnecessary tangents that can confuse your readers. Remember, a well-organized essay is like a well-packed suitcase. Everything has its place. 
Just as you wouldn't throw all your clothes into a suitcase haphazardly, you shouldn't throw all your ideas into your essay without a plan. What organizational tips help you keep your writing on track? Do you use outlines, mind maps, or perhaps sticky notes to arrange your thoughts? Share your wisdom in the comments. Your tips could be the key to helping someone else conquer their writing chaos. And don't miss our survey. We want to hear from you about what works and what doesn't when it comes to organizing your writing. Your feedback is invaluable. With these tips, you'll be well on your way to creating clear, organized, and impactful writing. Happy writing! Section 6. How do I wrap up a section without being boring? Ending a section gracefully is like nailing the dismount in gymnastics. You don't want to stumble. The goal is to summarize your main points without being repetitive. Try restating your key message in a new and interesting way, or end with a thought-provoking question that lingers in the reader's mind. Remember, a strong conclusion leaves your audience wanting more, just like a good stand-up routine. What are some of your favorite ways to conclude a section? Share your secrets in the comments and take our survey. Section seven. Can I use jokes in my intros? This is a question many writers and presenters often ponder. Want to add some laughs to your writing? Go for it. Humor can be a powerful tool in your arsenal. Humor is a great way to connect with your audience and make your writing more engaging. It breaks the ice and creates a bond between you and your readers or listeners. A well-placed joke or funny anecdote can lighten the mood and make even serious topics more approachable. It can transform a dry subject into something lively and memorable. Just remember to keep it relevant and appropriate for your audience. The key is to know your audience well and understand what kind of humor they will appreciate. Think of it like this. A good joke is like a sprinkle of confetti. It adds a touch of fun and festivity to your writing. But just like confetti, it should be used sparingly to avoid overwhelming your main message. What are some of your favorite ways to use humor in writing? Do you prefer witty one-liners, funny anecdotes, or clever wordplay? Share your comedic genius in the comments. We would love to hear how you incorporate humor into your work. And don't forget our hilarious survey. Your feedback helps us understand what tickles your funny bone and what doesn't. Remember, humor is subjective. What one person finds hilarious, another might not. So it's important to test your jokes and see how they land with different people. When used effectively, humor can make your intros not only more enjoyable, but also more memorable. It sets the tone for the rest of your content and can leave a lasting impression. So go ahead and experiment with humor in your intros. Find your unique comedic voice and let it shine through your writing. Whether it's a witty remark, a funny story, or a clever pun, the right joke can make your content stand out and resonate with your audience. So next time you're crafting an intro, don't be afraid to add a dash of humor. It might just be the perfect ingredient to make your content unforgettable. Section 8. What about serious topics? Do jokes still work? Even serious topics can benefit from a touch of humor. Humor can help break down barriers and make difficult subjects more palatable. The key is to use humor thoughtfully and respectfully. Avoid making light of sensitive situations or using humor at the expense of others. Remember, humor should enhance your writing, not detract from it. It's all about finding the right balance. How do you navigate the line between humor and sensitivity in your writing? Share your thoughts in the comments and take our seriously funny survey. Section nine, I'm scared of sounding repetitive. Help, worried about repeating yourself? Don't be, it's all about how you do it. Think of it like remixing a song. You're using the same elements but creating a whole new vibe. Vary your language. Use synonyms. Find creative ways to restate your point. Instead of saying important again, try crucial or essential. See? Fresh and fabulous. Remember, repetition with a twist keeps your writing dynamic and engaging. What are your tricks for avoiding repetition? Share your word wizardry in the comments. And don't forget our super duper survey. Section 10. My brain is fried. Any last tips? Feeling overwhelmed? Take a deep breath. You got this. Writing amazing intros takes practice. The more you write, the easier it gets. Here's a bonus tip. Read your intros out loud. Do they sound natural and engaging? If not, tweak them until they do. Remember, you are a writing rock star. Believe in yourself and your ability to craft captivating intros. What are your biggest writing challenges? Share your struggles in the comments and take our super helpful survey. 
Section 11. Ready to write amazing intros? Congratulations! You're now equipped with the knowledge and tools to write intros that'll make readers say, tell me more. Remember, a good intro is like a warm invitation, welcoming your audience into the world you've created. So go forth and write with confidence. And don't forget to have fun along the way. Now it's your turn. Share your thoughts, questions, and amazing intro ideas in the comments below. And don't forget to participate in our super duper extra special survey for a chance to win awesome prizes. We can't wait